Hello V-teamers, Elise here to tell you about a new promotion launching on Monday, May 10th. You broke your phone, we broke the rules. Customers who trade in their old or damaged phone can get up to $1,000 off our best 5G smartphones. Happy selling. Elise, thank you very much. And with that, we say welcome to Up to Speed Live on this Monday, May 10th. And there's a reason why we started with Elise's message. Uh, this is an opportunity for all of us uh, to get back into that excitement uh, back in April 1st when that uh, broken phone, uh, you broke your phone, we broke the rules, a promotion started. Uh, there was a wave of excitement and a, a wave uh, of an opportunity here uh, for all of us uh, to make sure that we're serving our customers uh, and that, uh, you know, when folks come into the store, uh, uh, that uh, that we're, we're there for them uh, for anything they need. So uh, we're looking to make sure that that extension continues that excitement uh, into May here. So really looking forward to that. And as uh, Elise said, those two simple words at the very end, happy selling. Let's continue to think about that and continue to find ways to, to make a splash. Uh, so with that, we say uh, welcome to Up to Speed. We have a very special guest uh, from uh, thousands of miles away. So get your virtual passports ready. We'll have more uh, from our special guest in just a bit. But first, we want to get through a few more uh, tidbits of Verizon news. So number one, uh, first and foremost, uh, we've had a week now to take the Pulse Plus survey. Uh, and if you're getting those email reminders about them, uh, I want to let you in on a little secret. Um, there's a way to get rid of those emails. So, so come a little closer. Don't tell anyone. A little secret here. Um, take the Pulse Plus survey. That is how you get rid of those emails. Uh, we want you to take those Pulse, Pulse Plus surveys. Uh, but you will be reminded if you don't, um, definitely take them. It's, it's the one way that you will ensure and guarantee uh, that your voice matters when it comes to the most important decisions our company is making. So go ahead and take those Pulse Plus uh, surveys, uh, and uh, we will certainly uh, bring you more uh, when the survey closes uh, and we see what our, our findings are. Of course, uh, those are uh, opinions from all of you. So take the survey. All right, next in the world of online security, the Verizon Business 2021 data breach investigations report is set to publish this Thursday, May 13th. Now, you, as you may know, DBIR, uh, it is an industry-leading report that takes an uh, in-depth look at the uh, cybersecurity trends, uh, and it's packed full of interesting insights and things you can really uh, take away from in the security landscape. Now, with the release of the report is also an event that you may uh, want to be uh, interested in attending. So uh, let's take the slide here. So this is happening, again, Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern. Verizon Business invites you to join our virtual fireside chat with Sam Path, our Verizon Business Chief Revenue Officer, our CISO, Nazrin Razai, and uh, Chris Novak, Director of Professional Services. Together, they'll be diving into the report, reflecting uh, on the most pressing issues for our customers as well as the wider industry. So uh, that, again, is Thursday at 8 a.m. All right. It is time now to say hello to our very special up to speed live guest uh, from a very long distance. Uh, uh, and uh, he is uh, joining us from one of Ronan's favorite uh, cities in the world, Dublin, Ireland. Peter Mitchell uh, was recently named uh, general manager of Verizon Connect, uh, uh, expanding his role as the CTO, chief Te technology officer. Peter uh, now leads more than 3,000 Connect teammates uh, all over the world. Uh, with that, uh, we're going to learn uh, about the industry, of course. We're going to learn about how fleet-based businesses uh, adopt a fleet management system, uh, fleet management software solution. So lots to talk about, lots to discuss with that. Uh, again, all the way from Dublin, Peter Mitchell, welcome to Up to Speed Live, sir. Thank you, Andy. Pleasure to be here. It's How are great things to over there? It's great. It's wonderful. A uh, little, uh, it's a little cooler than normal here in, in Jersey, but I suppose for some people it, it feels nice. Uh, the weather doing okay over there? Well, the weather over here is always changeable, Andy. So when it's not raining, it's good. We we'll take that. And <laughs> gotcha. today, Excellent. today it's mostly not raining, but not mostly. Cold. We'll take that. We'll definitely take that for a Monday. So, so Peter, let's let's get right into it. Um, I think there's a lot of people uh, that are excited about what Verizon Connect uh, is doing uh, for our company, but folks. Uh, there's always an opportunity to learn more about Verizon Connect. So with that, um, give us sort of a rundown, a history of Verizon Connect and its solutions. And, you know, um, there's a lot more than just connecting fleet vehicles. So kind of tell us about what we can learn uh, if folks are really wanting to dig deep and learn more about Connect. Sure. More than happy to. So if you look at the history uh, of Connect, there's kind of many origin stories in there. So primarily, uh, Connect is made of three major acquisitions. 
I came in through one, the Fleetmatics acquisition, where I was a, a CTO and co-founder. Um, it was an Irish-based company. We, uh, the majority of our customers were in the US. We went public on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, around the same time uh, that we were acquired, which was in 2016, uh, Verizon also acquired a company called Telegis. Now, Telegis were based on the West Coast, the US, and uh, with an engineering shop in Christchurch in New Zealand. Both of us, to be fair, um, had come primarily from connecting the vehicle. Uh, Verizon had already acquired a company called Hughes Telematics in which uh, there was a property called Network Fleet. So Fleetmatics focused on the small to medium business, Telegis on the large enterprise, and Network Fleet on the government space. So it was a nice mix. Of course, we had all been competitors, so when you come together like that, there's uh, at first everyone's talking about how their way is the best, and of course everyone is right to a degree. But we came together relatively quickly, and big credit to Andreas Orlando uh, for that. At that starting point, all but 8% of our new revenue was coming from above the connected vehicle, which is why I understand people think of Connect, they think of connected vehicle. Uh, we've grown that, and now it's uh, touching 40% of our new revenue comes from solutions above the vehicle. So what does that mean? Well, what ties all our customers together is that they have a mobile workforce. They have the majority of their revenue coming from outside the four walls. And so we operate um, and provide a platform of products, not just one, but a platform of products that help them on several layers. So at, like any business, your first job is to stay in business. So connecting the vehicle actually does a great job in allowing you to see how efficient your vehicles are. Um, you can add in layers like intelligent routing. So you, you make sure your day uh, is, is as efficient as it can be in field service. So you get your costs nice and tight, but you also get more work done. Now, once you're in business, you need to be compliant. So we've got uh, compliant solutions there. Um, and then on top of that, safety, very quickly, you want to be safe. It's your reputational damage out there, first and foremost. If you are a company with field workers, the customers see the drivers, they see the technicians, they don't see the CEO. But then on top of that, there's a human safety and the safety to third parties. And then after that, um, there's things like being ecologically sound. So we save people from having to drive miles they don't need to. So we take fuel usage out, and increasingly we see people uh, do things like uh, electric vehicles, and they want to be known for that. So there's that kind of nice purpose to everything we do, and increasingly it's beyond the vehicle itself. Yeah, and thank you uh, for, for kind of showing us the totality uh, of Connect, and, and really it's such an exciting space. Um, so as we talk about your new role here as general manager, expanding your role as CTO, tell us uh, where do your priorities lie? What are you focusing on right now? Well, we have six tenets that we, we, we apply across the group. We've been doing this in product for quite a while, so now is a great opportunity to get really tight across the entire company. So, so the first thing is to build products for purpose. As I mentioned, everything we do brings some purpose to a customer. It allows them to be more efficient, safer, compliant, uh, and ecologically sound. Um, we do things like increasingly using integrated dash cams. So I mean, we've had customers who've told us their drivers were a little, uh, you know, a little afraid at first that there's a dash cam in the vehicle or they being watched. And then someone bumps into them and tries to uh, claim off them and they're exonerated by the, by the camera. So th that's the first thing. The second thing is making sure that our customers love what we do. I don't think any, any company is as customer-centric as they'd like to be. Uh, we do it by design. So we've got an incredible experienced team uh, who designed from the very beginning how the customer will feel in the buying, installation, and using process. All of those lead to the third one, which is having the top talent in the industry. And we really are a software group. We're a little bit different in Verizon, we leverage the best of Verizon, but we're, we're a SaaS business. And having everyone together in those autonomous teams where you've got engineers and product managers, UX, and now we can add marketing and sales into those groups, uh, working very closely together uh, allows us to work really quickly. We want to be diverse. We're lucky to have people from all over the world working for us. Now, that gets us on to the fourth one, 
which Matt Ellis will uh, be joyful to hear, which is double digit growth. I mean, as a SaaS business, we got to be double digit growth. So we get all those things right. We, we're adding more customers in, we're selling more things to them, and we're stopping people leaving. The fifth one is to use Verizon as a superpower. And we've got an incredible challenge, uh, channel in Verizon. And we want to give back to by working on uh, uh, POCs on things like 5G units. And then finally, every company has got to be efficient. So we're driving to one platform. We still have some legacy ones from the integrations, one ARP system, one piece of hardware. So all of that nice and tidy, nice and neat, and everyone's aligned to those. And having uh, the ability to influence all groups now mean we, means we can accelerate those. I love that Verizon as a superpower. It's it's awesome. It's it's so empowering, yeah. um, and you know it's you know the the opportunity there. Uh, you mentioned SaaS. You mentioned so many different products we can offer. It's the same kind of excitement that we started at the top of the show here. You know um, that that promotion for the stores. I mean, that, there's just so much alignment there uh, throughout the company, and there's a lot to be excited about uh, for all of our teams. Uh, so, Peter, I, I understand. I, I'll preface this next question um, knowing that things can change very quickly uh, in our world. Uh, but that said, um, sort of a, a forward-thinking question: What what do you see? Uh, connect being in a year or three years from now? What do you see down the road? Sure. Well, first of all, right now, the way to get onto our platform is through the connected vehicle. Everything else you buy on top of that. Uh, and we see, as we move forward, other on-ramps onto the platform. For example, been able to buy asset trackers on their own first. And an asset tracker, traditionally in our industry, has been, has been kind of considered like a vehicle that doesn't drive around much. We've completely revamped that experience this year. It's a huge underpenetrated market. We're doing a lot in video. We've got this incredible team uh, in Florence of data scientists uh, who specialize in computer vision. Um, and this new stream of information that we're getting in from both uh, looking out through the vehicle and also looking back into the, at the driver gives us great context in what's happening. But down the line, we'll be able to prevent things you know, the easiest thing in the world to detect is a crash because you just get a sudden stop, right? But what if you could prevent them by seeing things that are starting to happen and addressing those at source? Huge, huge money to be, to be saved there and lives to be saved, which really adds uh, to that purpose. We see uh, us getting a lot deeper on the field service side too. And the other thing that we always have to remind ourselves, and every software company does, in fact, every company does, is you can't fall in love with how you're solving problems now. So just because we're good at putting a unit in a vehicle or a camera in a vehicle doesn't mean that's the best way to solve their problems. Down the line, we may want to encourage our customers to not get in the vehicle at all and fix problems remotely. I mean, you know yourself, you bring a plumber out to the house, Often they have to come back because they look and see and they go, oh, I have to go off, get apart. What if they could do that? What if they could leverage some of the Verizon technologies uh, and use video to kind of do a quick check, uh, automatically order something, and then come when the time is right? Or even have highly skilled technicians in the back and worker technicians at the front. So there's a lot, lot of ways this can go. There's so much beauty in that thought too, that forward thinking, you know, the problems we have now may not be the problems we have in the future, but certainly we want to keep uh, thinking and evolving that way. That's so awesome, Peter, thank you. Um, I've asked you a lot about uh, your thoughts on the business. Of course, uh, we do here on Up to Speed like to get to know uh, our guests on a, on a much more personal level. So with that, uh, we have that 60 seconds with our leaders. So we're going we're gonna to get you ready for that. I want you to kind of mentally prepare for the rapid fire questions. We got our clock ready to go. But before we do that, uh, we'll give you a little time to prepare. Um, we want to tell uh, folks, uh, look back on a, a very successful small business days, which, which kicked off on April 29th uh, with NFL champion Chris Godwin, no relation to Jeremy. Uh, he helped us deliver a big surprise to a small business owner on Good Morning America, $7,000 worth of devices, connectivity, security, tech support, uh, and then the small business love uh, continued. So as we take a look at some of the highlights here, uh, uh, over the next nine days after April 29th, uh, business and consumer V-teamers partnered to welcome small business owners into our stores, even meeting with them virtually. We saw them everywhere uh, for complimentary tech uh, assessments, special promotional offers, uh, like $1,000 off a 5G phone. Uh, Wendy Tessetta, tell us more about why we should all be proud. Hello, Verizon team. 
I am excited to report this Small Business Day event was the best one we have ever done together. As a matter of fact, day one was better than Black Friday 2020. So what does that tell us? There's business out there. Small businesses need our solutions. And when the consumer team and the business team get together, we're pretty unstoppable. So here's my message to you. Our phone lines are open, our stores are open, and our Verizon team is working together to do the best we can for all of our communities. So let's keep working forward together because we're just getting started. Wendy, thank you very much. And that's such an important message for all of us to think about, that we can be there for some of the businesses that mean the most in our communities. And, as, and you know, connecting it back to what Peter just said, uh, you know, there are solutions that we can provide for them now. And then, of course, down the road, there will be solutions later. And you want to make sure uh, that whether it's a business, a small business, or even a customer coming in asking about that broken phone promo, you want to be there for them now so that down the road, they trust us to be there for them later. So awesome, awesome. Congratulations to our small business uh, team uh, and uh, everyone involved in making sure that small businesses matter during those Verizon small business days. All right. So uh, as promised, Peter, uh, we want to get to know you uh, and get to know you uh, quickly and also, of course, in, on a personal level. So uh, we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock, and this is 60 seconds with Mr. Peter Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell, are you ready? I am, Andy, and I have my hurley stick here to protect me from some of your more difficult questions. <laughs> It's not that hot of a hot seat there, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, see, we'll see what happens here. But I've got, uh, I've got these questions, and, and Peter has not seen these questions, so uh, we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and start the clock. Mr. Mitchell, last book you read? Last book I read was Pocoon by Spike Milligan. Favorite band to see in concert? Uh, Leonard Cohn. He's sadly no longer with us, but definitely Leonard Cohn. Cold weather or hot weather? Mm, I kind of like cold. Maybe I'm just not used to the hot. The least popular phrase that Americans think sound like something an Irishman would say. Oh, there's a few. First of all, uh, what's the weather like in the UK? We love the UK, but we're not there. And St. Paddy's Day. Don't say St. Paddy's Day. It's St. Paddy's Day. Excellent. Football or cricket? Oh, come on. I'm an Irishman. Football. <laughs> Which team do you root for? I root for Arsenal, and they break my heart regularly. <laughs> Favorite movie of all time? Mmm. Either Goodfellas or 12 Angry Men by the White Ribbon. Oh, uh, just in time. You got it right in there for the buzzer there. And that, there you go, folks. 60 seconds uh, with Peter Mitchell. How did that feel? Was that, was that, uh, that wasn't too bad, right? That wasn't too bad. I'll put the hurl away now, Andy. <laughs> hey, I have, a, I have a question for you, Andy. Yes, Yesterday sir. was Mother's Day, and your mother is something of a, of a celebrity around here. How is she? <laughs> She's doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. So mom's in Chicago. I'm here. Uh, but uh, we had a nice uh, chat, and uh, my brother's in, in, the, in the area there. So uh, they went out and uh, had a little brunch, and uh, I told Brian to, to give mom an extra hug. So... Uh, but it's been great, and it's awesome to see all of our V-teamers, our leaders, our V-teamers posting about moms. And, of course, you know, we had, um, yeah. you know, we had great promotion for mom as well uh, with the BOGO. And so uh, lots of love all around, but really appreciate you, you asking, Peter. Uh, we got to know a lot about you. And as we take this next slide here, uh, we, uh, we found some pictures uh, oh, of uh, your team, of your uh, love for Arsenal there, even though they break your heart. Um, and then, of course, the, and then you've got like the Christmas sweaters. You've got Ronan, uh, uh, you know, taking part there as well and the Fleet Maddox team. Uh, and then in the center there, uh, of course, is you. And uh, I'm not sure who that is. Is that? Uh, oh, that is Hans. Uh, so we're going to take a page out of Hans's book here. And, and uh, Peter, as we um, as we close the show, I uh, wanted to get your dinner table thoughts uh, about uh, what our team can do uh, to not only, uh, you know, support Connect and think about Connect, but really kind of support each other. Um, some some thoughts from you uh, as we uh, end the show today. Sure. Uh, this is a new question, <laughs> but it's a good question. <laughs> I think, um, oh, let me see, what would I say over dinner? I would say this. Always remember that we're not selling products. We're not even selling experiences. We're selling 
a transformation in people's businesses. And if you can do that, everything else is easy. Um, for the rest of Verizon, we're looking forward to being able to bundle a lot more of the Verizon products. Um, and for the Connect team, remember, and for, for the broader Verizon team, the alchemy of turning ideas into software, into sales, takes a little bit of time, but once you do it, and once you've got a nice cadence going, the rewards are incredible. But the last thing I would say is have fun while you're doing it. That's the only reason to do anything is to have fun while you're doing it. That's what we love here uh, on Up to Speed. And, and we've had so much fun with you, Peter. Thank you so much uh, for your time uh, all the way in Dublin. I love what you said, that we are selling a transformation and we have an opportunity at every point uh, with our customers uh, to, to let them know that this is what we're doing and that's what we're all about. So, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, appreciate uh, you sharing a little bit about yourself as well. And, of course, a big congratulations to the Connect team uh, for continued success there. So as we close out here, uh, we do um, have some friends who'd like to help us close out. Uh, we're going to send it on over to our friends in Ohio. And so from Dublin all the way to the Cuyahoga, uh, we say goodbye on this Monday. A lot more to come. Uh, so stick around this week on Up to Speed. We've got a lot more to share with you. Uh, but uh, Ohio crew, take it away. Until next time, you're up to speed.